everybody welcome in it's dynasty mode the unofficial ea sports college football video game podcast my name was arky shay that is dimitri ravanos dimitri man i love you man it's, it's good to see you and talk about this game one more time arky shay we don't do it often enough some people would say some people would say that, like uh, some of our listeners uh, and our viewers over on the old YouTubes. Can can I that. tell you, I, I'm discovering this on Twitter as more and more people interact and, and start to follow. And then, so interact, start to follow, and then start interacting with stuff I put up that is not about the podcast or the game. We have a very uh, socially and politically diverse listener base. Oh, interesting. I have not I, encountered I, this. I've only encountered sort of video game kind of stuff so far. Yeah, well, I mean, as as you know, I tweet about everything that is uh that goes through my head, right? It is um By the way, congratulations to your Celtics. Yes, thank you. Um it's what the Lord wanted. Um we are just his vessels. Uh I um I think that this is probably true of college football. Like we think of it so much as a southern game that I think people you know, largely view the fan base as a uh, as a very conservative group. But like, I, I think it is more generational difference than social or political difference uh, in the way people approach this sport. And, and no, I think I, this, the same is true of the video game. No, that's interesting. Like we, we do have a wheelhouse uh, age wise and, and generation wise as far as uh, our listenership. Like if you look at sort of the analytics and uh, of our, our, our downloads and stuff, and I, and I do like once a week or something like at the end of uh, the, before we come on with the next week's podcast, just to sort of see where we're at. Yeah. And we are right in sort of that, you know, where, what Matt Brown had talked about trying to get, you know, recent graduates and young people interested in the game sort of phase. Mm-hmm. And then getting into like, you know, we, we played this game. We haven't had it for a decade and we had it, you know, in our teens and stuff, early twenties uh, generation and a little bit beyond, like, you know, it, it's interesting to me to see this because some of that a little bit beyond, you know, I never grew up in a family where, where like my dad, for, for example, or stepfather or anything played video games. Yeah. But now every dad plays video games because they grew up playing right. video games, you know? Right. It's, so like, it's my dad. It's an interesting dynamic. My dad had the original Sega, like before the Genesis, the original Sega. And it was one of these things where he was told he would enjoy it. And I spent more time playing it than he did. You know, and so like occasionally we play a sports game together and I would smoke it. And and then it would get to the point where it's like, Dad, what's what? What's the point? Why are we doing this? (laughs) You know, so no, that's that's a really good point. Like, I, I think that. Two, and this is going to be an interesting bend on the game that we really haven't seen. When the new version comes out and there is the mobile version of the game, it's going to be really interesting, I think, to see the uh, generational divide between who is very happy with the mobile version and who is prioritizing, uh, you know, the the graphic engine that one of the uh, newer systems can provide. Yeah, and as someone who didn't talk to a lot of people about the game when I was playing the game, right? I had sort of my close circle of friends, but social media wasn't what it was when I was in college and in yeah. high school and stuff. Like, I- I'm figuring out more and more people like the PC version of these games and hoping like the PC uh, version comes out so they'll be able to play them, which I think it's interesting because I want to start spinning forward on today's show by just moving a quick addendum to last week's show that it seems like at- since we've spoken... Apple looks like they're in the lead right now for the EA Sports possible merger slash purchase. But Disney is also one of those still talking with EA. But it looks like Apple's in the lead. So that's interesting because you're talking about PC versus Mac. And you get a Mac version maybe uh, of this game in time. You know, again, time will tell. Uh, and then I think let's let's start talking about this episode. How about how about now, huh? Is now the Let's time? do it. Okay, good. Uh, so this game, this, this this podcast, as you know, is all about the college football video game uh, that we grew up on. Uh, and last week we looked at a little bit of the news that was happening. And this week we're going to look at some more news just because it was happening again this week. And we'll take brief divergence from the actual game itself just to talk about this. By the way, we've got some really fun stuff in store for you, if you as long as you keep subscribing and listening. Uh, I was telling Dimitri about an idea earlier this week that I wanted him in on. Just telling you. 
this thing's we're, we're gonna have some fun with you guys this summer and, it, and beyond it was but, such a uh, good idea i do not remember this conversation oh oh um uh can I, you would need uh, a credential oh right, right 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 okay so um Moving forward, we will get back into the game next week and, and specific stuff uh, with it itself and uh, what we like about it, don't like, blah, blah, blah. But there was something that came out this week that I thought provoked an interesting conversation that I think we should have about this uh, game and, more importantly, about the game coming back. And it came from Greg Sankey, who is the commissioner of the Southeastern Conference. And if you... Are into this game, you know the SEC wields a pretty mighty penis when it comes around uh, to decisions being made and thoughts being uh, 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 bantied about in the world of college athletics. He was on the SEC championship game broadcast on su- Saturday, Sunday, I believe. I believe it was mm-hmm. Sunday. Baseball, he- the college sports video game that failed miserably. I was going to say, like, speaking of games that I wouldn't mind seeing back, like. No, that I game was awful. The, I, I would play. Look, listen, make it like $9. I don't care. Like, you can get away <laughs> with it. There's way more. Pl- well, there's not way more players, but I mean, if you're I don't even get think, like, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, I think they were missing, like, whole conferences. Like, I think oh, it might were. have been a seven or eight conference game. Yeah, like, the, the baseball one feels like a really difficult one to sort of push right. across the plate to be a really good product, like we were going to get with the college football, or we assume we're going to get with college football. And maybe if, like, March Madness comes back, right? Yeah. So, anyway, Greg Sankey was on with that telecast, uh, and it was interesting because he was asked about NIL. And NIL, obviously, has been a very popular topic in college athletics, but we only bring it up because of the quote I'm about to show you on your screen. And by the way, if you're listening to this via podcast on YouTube, you can see the video version and also see this quote. Um... Oh, subscribe to Arky Shea, A-R-K-Y-S-H-E-A. It sort of brought into mind a question that I think is really worth asking about the power brokers, the important people with the game itself. And all right, we'll put quote. up the uh, put up the yeah, put up the quote, and then we'll uh, we'll dive into all those questions because I I haven't even seen this quote yet. I tried to uh, put the like touch screen, put the quote on. This monitor is not a touch screen. I just learned that uh, the hard way. Sure, sure, that'll happen. Almost sometimes. about to poke my finger through the screen. So here we go. Uh, Sankey said in part, quote, another expectation, again, this is about NIL, is that it's actual name, image, likeness activity, autograph signings, jersey sales, running camps. Whether or not video games ever come back is not at the top of my list, but actual activity and most of what you've seen is really healthy. And Dimitri, that that to me sparked uh, a very interesting question. Okay. With this college football game clearly coming back, it does not feel like this quote should scare me into thinking the game's not coming back. Right? Like, right. EA's already come out and made a major sort of tease and sort of announcement about this. We've been talking about this for months and months and months. They've already sent out, has CLC, the, the collegiate license company, uh, information to get licensing. The game's coming back. Oh, listen, this is, but, we learned this from the Jimbo and Saban thing, right? Power brokers around SEC football love to talk like we don't have access to the news. <laughs> right. <laughs> this, yeah, that I, may be, I mean, that go may ahead. Be true, like when the SEC was expanding in 1992. Right, <laughs> right, like, <laughs> right. right. This is the thing about like a lot of these guys that frustrates me so much. Like they're not dopes, but they act like such fucking dopes. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it, it's a lot of like, hey, you guys don't know everything, okay? It's like <laughs> That's right. maybe, That's right. but we know a lot. I, I also <laughs> I like that there is an alternative here, which is Greg Sankey is not aware that the internet exists. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hope that is the thing. In fact, I'm not wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure that his Twitter account is not actually run by him, but by someone that thinks he should have a Twitter account. That's right. So, That's right. You uh, go into his office. There's not even a computer. There's just a bunch of spiral notebooks. 
<laughs> right. And he comes in because he posts photographs of like when he runs or something like that. Yeah. He just comes with like his uh, Kodak camera that's been developed. <laughs> you know, the fucking. All right, put these on. He runs holding a discman, one of those yellow sport discman. <laughs> Uh, that that is Greg Sankey. And by the yep. way, if you've seen Greg Sankey, that's Greg Sankey. Like, look yep. him up on the on the on the old internet. Um, but the question it brought to mind is that not that we're worried about the game not coming back, but do the people that are in charge of the majority of this presidents, commissioners, athletic directors, do the real power brokers do they want this game back? Like, is this something where this is a bit of a hassle for them? They don't see the value in it? Because one of the things I do think is interesting is the payout from it, which is sparse compared to probably what they're used to now with all the television contracts. So it may be one of those, like, this isn't even on my radar because I don't really care because we don't get that much money from it. So I... I I would answer this in two ways. Number one, and it's all about generations, right? Like this generation of commissioners seem a little more media business savvy than their predecessors. So from that standpoint, I would think that guys like Greg Sankey and Kevin Warren and um, George George Klayavkov. Yeah, I mean, like I would think these guys would understand the link right like especially like think about Klyavkov in the Pac-12 like this is a conference that has struggled to produce a champion with more than 10 wins for a long time like they just it's not that they don't have access to the playoff it's just they just keep tripping over their own dicks on the way there so and, I think and Utah's and Utah's dick yes <laughs> um I think that they're should be this sort of acknowledgement of um, I guess to use the hippie term, everything's connected, man, right? Like this is going to create uh, a bigger national fan base, which will then make the television product, which is where you get most of your money more valuable. So on the one hand, I would think that um, these guys understand that. On the other hand, I do wonder if uh Roy Kramer were still with us if John Swafford were still in charge of the ACC Jim Delaney at the Pac-10 I wonder if they would have a much more welcoming attitude because they lived through both they they lived through what the game can do and what the game leaving did to the sport in terms of national appeal I think there is a very real case to be made that the that the fact that that game got good late 90s, early 2000s, that it coincides not so indirectly with the explosion of college football on television. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I I can tell you so many people I know that love this game that learned about, you know, I I live in North Carolina now. I grew up in Alabama. I, I know so many people up here that learned about some of the stadium traditions of the SEC through this game, the Gator Chomp for instance, down uh, in Florida, the, the the War Eagle flyover in, in Auburn. Those are things that they did not know existed before this game. And you hit the nail on the head. Like, I think, what, like up until mid-90s, I, I think occasionally you'd get an SEC game, one SEC game every week on ABC. Otherwise, you had to have cable um, or, or you had to live in the footprint and have Jefferson Pilot. Um, Hell yeah. Yeah, I, I that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, um, the one of the reasons because there's a I have a problem with Greg Sankey who is completely forward thinking on a lot of things, right? Like he's literally the guy that's still mentioning at the SEC spring meetings as we're speaking this entire week uh, that the SEC, amongst other things, is considering an all SEC national champion playoff at the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, which obviously is Boulder Dash, but they're clearly like they think about everything, right? What well, how on a national telecast, Greg Sankey would be very flippant about the video game because he didn't have to mention the video game. You know what I mean? Like, he clearly mentioned the running camps. He mentioned autograph signing jersey sales. That's fine. No one asked him directly about the video game before and or after. I listened yeah. to the entire thing. Hell, if I'm going to watch that, the, neither one of my team, neither one, my team wasn't in that game, so I'm not interested in it. Uh, but... I listened to his entire inning. Not one person mentioned video games. So 
for him to sort of flippantly say that about probably the thing we care the most about with name image and likeness when it comes to the mass audience. Yeah. It's pretty backwards for a commissioner that's usually going frontwards. You know, I, I think I wonder if there was a better way to say that. Right. I mean, certainly there are bigger issues with NIL right now. And listen, the conferences and the NCAA brought this on themselves, this, you know, stealth pay for play thing. But, you know, if you are the commissioner of the SEC, you do like figuring out how to rein this in, figuring out how to package this in a PR friendly way for the old heads. Um, is really important, right? So I could understand that there's probably some truth to that. Whether or not we get the video game back is really low on Greg Sankey's list of priorities, concerns, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it does come off like he is, you know, telling you this is not important. And if you care about it, you are an idiot. <laughs> it's, it's literally like, it, it, it's like my dad, <laughs> like just telling yeah. me like, I, I don't care about the, the game, all right? Get your chores oh, done. Oh, no, it's, it's not just <laughs> like it's your dad. It's like your dad is mad at you. Don't talk yeah, to me about any damn video, video game. Get your chores done. I don't care about these video <laughs> games. All right? Like, it, it, it's, it's clearly what I'm going to be with my son, right? right. Like, I'm going to be a little empathetic and be like, listen, I understand Gran Turismo 91 is going well right now, but you got to get out there and clean the gutters, Mr. Seven-Year-Old. Speaking of which, give me, give me one second here. I, I just thought about this. Hey, Aaron, time to feed the cats, buddy. <laughs> leave, leave it in. <laughs> oh, I had no plans to take it out. Yeah, I was about to say, let the people know that there's more than one cat in this house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it goes, uh, obviously, to you screaming to your kids, like I was screaming to my fictional seven-year-old, because he's only yeah. two, almost two now. Um, so it's, you, it's, it's a little backwards for Greg Sankey to be the guy that says that, but it's also... Very flippant, because if you listen to any time Greg Sankey is in a public forum, he's very measured, right? like when he speaks. And he's very good at public speaking. He's a very good orator. It's just he knows what he's going to say. Mm -hmm. And that just feels like an either an off-the-cuff remark. But you, he doesn't usually give you off-the-cuff stuff. So yeah, I, th that's why it sort of made me think, is this sort of beneath them? Because the second question I had is, you rem you remember the numbers we were talking about that like Clemson and stuff that we're getting from the video game like the high end schools mm -hmm. we're getting well less than a hundred thousand dollars and that's after being a really good school for four straight years or ten straight years or something like that and getting on the high end of one of these four tiers that that Electronic Arts was paying out so a hundred grand compared to you know the fifty two million that like the Big Ten was putting out there. I think they were given to each school uh, just from TV rights uh, last last uh, last that spring. I mean, it's it's barely a crumb to sort of care about. It kind of makes me think like, listen, people our age, our generation, a little younger, definitely a little bit older who are sort of with this, care about the game. And that's probably one of the, you know, grassroots issues that, that sort of we care about. But he's clearly like, listen, I'm, you know, I'm shooting for dollars, not dimes at this point. So let me ask you this. Uh, and, and this probably ties into your point a little bit. Do you think some of this is the SEC arrogance, right? Like it just means more. The SEC doesn't think they need your little video game to matter to people like that's that's a Mountain West concern. Let Conference USA worry about the video game. We're the SEC. Actually, with the SEC, it would probably be more like, let the ACC worry about the video <laughs> game. We are the mighty SEC. I mean, like, I, I think there's some of that at play here, right? Like, they, there is a certain level. Like, listen, you do not... Um, <laughs> Again, the conference is talking about having an all-conference. That's exactly what I was about to say. To determine a national champion. That's exactly what I was about to say. You do not have that conversation if there's not a level of arrogance in your conference. And look, I went to a conference school. Both Arky and I grew up in Alabama. This is the culture we were raised in, and it's also the conference we love when it comes to college football. I, I'm not saying that some of that arrogance is not earned, but that arrogance can blind you to i think the priorities of people that do not owe you fealty to the way you came up right like this is something yeah. working in the media industry you and i talk about all the time with our colleagues like there's never going to be a day where suddenly you know my my daughter who's the older of my two kids who's 12 she's not going to wake up one day and think oh well i've been streaming all of my uh 
audio on my iPad and for talk, I've been listening to podcasts, but you know, Hey, here I am uh, 35 years old now time to turn on that radio. Like that's just not going to happen. Right. <laughs> and so I, I think that, uh, that some of Sankey's, um, some of Sankey's, uh, uh, points of view here sort of fall into that same category of you know dude you got to meet people you, you got to meet younger people where they are rather than demanding they come to you and isn't this like wouldn't it have been a really good opportunity for like you mentioned like a kevin warren to get some really good like nice goodwill out of this and you know just to sort of poke a little bit and be like you know even the next morning just been like hey had a really good talk with our uh, presidents about the future of the football game or, or something like that to be like, yeah, we care. Because again, we all are under the assumption still that the game is going to happen. Yeah. And we care that the game's going to happen. We know you're all going to be on TV and we know you're scrounging for every single nickel and, uh, and oh, sorry, not even nickel anymore, hundredth of a million of a dollar that you're going to get every, <laughs> for a brand new uh, TV deal. That's fine. We know there's not going to be a world where we can't access your games anymore. Those pay per view yeah. days and, and they're gone. They're just they're just gone. You yeah, know, it's, it's all streaming services and, and watching you know YouTube TV or something like that. That that that's what it is now. We get it. Still with cable and satellite. You got to understand that like this is a thing that's going to sell three million copies, and that's not right. going to be four to every person. Like, and, and, a, three million people is a lot of people that care about this, and to flippantly go out there, I do think it's right. I, I do think it's right to say that it's a little bit of arrogance to throw out there that this is not that's a priority. Because again, you didn't have to bring it up. You brought up other examples of nil. You know? Yeah, I, I would. I would argue too that. You know, okay, so at 40, I, I I would guess I'm probably maybe 10 years younger than Greg Sankey would be my guess. I I, I don't know for sure. Like, honestly, he could man. walk in wearing a shirt that says, hello, my name is Greg Sankey. And I would ask, who is that guy? Um, I, I don't need Greg Sankey. And I don't think fans of the video game need Greg Sankey to suddenly fall in love with video game football. They don't need him to fall in love with EA Sports College football. But this is, to your point, this thing's going to sell 3 million copies. Like, maybe all of them won't, but this one will. Like, this is yeah. this is one, the comeback is one that is worth embracing. Because I think that whether these old uh, guys realize it or not, um, and, and by old, like, we're not even just talking like, uh, chronologically or, or physically old. We're talking about like, you know, just your, your attitude towards this stuff, whether these guys want to acknowledge it or not, this is a significant milestone for a huge chunk of their audience for a huge yeah. chunk of their college football, loving audience, particularly in the sec and the big 10 where college football just drives the bus. Unless you're in a weirdo place like Kentucky or Indiana. Greg Sankey is 58, by the way. Um, so. Wow. He wears it well. I assume. Again, I don't even know what he looks like. <laughs> glasses change a man. They just change the yeah. look. You just sort of don't know. When you put the dark rim glasses on, who knows? Are you 14 or are you 40? Um, look at you. See? Like yep. Now you look 18, 19? I, I do feel like my glasses make me look younger. For him, could be older. Sure. Like, clearly for you, it's not older. It's younger. It makes me feel a lot younger. <laughs> um, You know the thing about the video game is that the more we sort of talk with people about it and sort of bond with some of these friends that are becoming our friends on Twitter and and uh, and on Instagram and uh, by the way if you if you see me on Instagram please f find me on Twitter I'm much more active over there mm. um, but the more we sort of interact with these people the more it like did, did this game, less so than a lot of like i guess we'll say madden or something like it it's a part of people oh right? sure and the sure. fact that the fact that you're you're going to bring this game back you're going to blow all kinds of records out of the water when it comes to this video game and if you as a conference are struggling to get people into the stadium interested in the sports paying attention more than just watching you know whatever clips you can find on you know on the old youtubes or something when you're struggling to get that audience, that younger audience, the the students that are in college now, high school students, p 
people in their 20s and 30s more interested in the game itself you should be embracing that like th- so this is a perfect this is the perfect avenue that even though it may not get you let's say in negotiations each school the bet the SEC the best possible gets a quarter million out of this right let's just say like they figure that out that quarter million is nothing to what you could be getting from these new groups of people who are fully interested in your university, who may want to buy merchandise to university. We see it all the time with that uh, with Home Field Apparel, yep. right? Like that 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 company online that sells all these cool T-shirts. Like people will buy T-shirts of other universities if they like them or have some kind of attachment to them. They, they don't even have to it, like it them. Just if if it's a cool, if it's a cool logo, if it, if it is something that yeah. uh, sparks a memory for you, so I want to end by sort of reversing that on you just a little bit because I, this is, I think it. I, did it, Greg it, say it didn't, text you? Is that what happened? Yeah, he did. He wanted me okay. to tell you that he is not interested in the video game, and you are oh. wasting his time. Frankly, <laughs> um, he re- he didn't really reverse it. He just doubled down. Yeah, I I wonder because it didn't dawn on me until you said something there that maybe we're not giving Sankey enough credit here. Is it possible that given that it's harder to get people to go to games now, given that, you know, live TV is so or I guess uh, uh, live games are so important to television, um, it's not just younger audiences. Right. Again, I'm 40. I had this revelation a couple of years ago. Like I'm never going to a college football game again. Like I used to make time to go every year. And then my uh, college roommate and I, we went together to the Alabama Tennessee game. I want to say in 18. Um, And we both got there, just looked at each other and like, yeah, we're too old for this. Like, I mean, we're not going to do this anymore. We'll just get together and go to someone's house where it's more comfortable. Is it possible that part of the reason he sort of had the bristled uh, reaction that he did is this is competition for the real life product. I mean, I, I get that, you know, it's not going to be one for one for television, but certainly, certainly it's one for one to buying a ticket to a game because tickets to a game aren't cheap. I, I, I grant you that could be something that he's thinking maybe in the back of his head. And that's why he says it's not the top of his list. I, there, there's a slight possibility of that. But I think Greg Sankey's too smart to, or is smart enough to know better, that this is this is something that can widen the umbrella to bring interest to SEC schools or to get people more more diehardedly into it. I'm taking that. That's an ad, that's an adverb now. I mean, uh, listen, th- I, I I go back to what I said earlier. I, I think there is something to be said for, um what this game being on the market means to the national fan base, right? Like there are huge sections of the countries that just don't give a shit about college football because how long has it been since we've not had two teams east of the Mississippi River playing for the national championship? Uh, I don't have the exact number, but it feels... 2014. That's right. right. (laughs) That's right. That's right. And one of them was Notre Dame, so I'm just thinking the other one had to been like a... Yeah. You know, uh, when did Colorado-Michigan play? Mm. No, they didn't play. They were just awarded national championship. Uh, they did not. Well, they were not did play in the uh, in the in the regular season. The Cordell Stewart game. Yes, that, what, what was that? Ninety four. Yeah, because that was uh, 94, that 93. Washington Co Championship year. Uh, Washington Co Championship year was ninety one. Right, that they split with 91? Miami. Yeah, ninety four. Ninety four was Colorado and no ninety was Colorado and Georgia Tech. 91 was uh, Washington and Miami, 92 Alabama, 93 Florida State, 94 was Nebraska, right? Oh, you're right. 94 was Nebraska. That's a good yeah. point. So, yeah, that 94 uh, Colorado-Nebraska game uh, that I was bringing up the whole time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you know what I love about that rivalry? Colorado Is Colorado Nebraska. Yeah, Colorado spoke it into existence. Like one day they just told Nebraska, hey, you're our rival now. Nebraska didn't know that they were allowed to say, no, we're not. Well, that's what I think is cool. And, <laughs> you know, this is outside the game that's coming up with some of the the new uh, scheduling, interesting things with uh, all the conferences now that they're getting rid of sort of uh, divisions and stuff that if you yeah. change it to where you don't have, quote unquote, pods or traditional rivals all the time that, you know, like the SEC basically said, Hey, Mississippi State, you and Kentucky, you hate each other. 
<laughs> right. Now they play it every year, and you're like, oh, right? That right. that only worked with one created rivalry, and it took a hurricane to make it uh, make it work. Was Florida and LSU? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then it was just like, are you dodging us? <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, uh, this is weird, but all right. <laughs> See, that needs to be in the game, like petty athletic director political intrigue. Oh man, that. I mean, I'm not sure how we're going to be able to get to that end of the game to sort of make sure that it is petty. Uh, but be like, to, to throw up on your screen, it's like an athletic director mode. Uh, inclement weather canceled your game with Georgia Tech. And now you're just like, fuck you guys, we're on. I'm, we're calling. Yeah, as, as I was about to say, yeah, like your, your options are play the game at Georgia Tech or, uh, you know, question their patriotism. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, uh... That car you guys like to ride out on. Um, That's right. What would you say if it, you know, blew up? <laughs> <laughs> that car you guys like to ride out on. Oh, no, actually, this would be addressing uh, your own fan base. Is, uh, you know, that rambling wreck they like to uh, ride out on. That looks um, looks awful lot like uh, Chinese sweatshop labor as far as I'm concerned. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, that's been thrown out into the uh, the media. You've now been canceled. Next school, please. <laughs> All right. I just think it was an interesting conversation to have because I, I I think that there are probably a lot of people like Greg Sankey who sort of see the college football games not coming back, but the 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 fervor around it coming back, and people. At media days, we'll ask him again about the video game. I'm 100. Oh, for sure. And I, and I bet he has friends of family that ask about the video game constantly coming back. Now that we know it is, and he's probably. And, and I think part of the reason he threw that there was probably like, "Don't ask about the game. Don't give a shit about the game. All right, we're worried about other things." And I get it, but the game is matters. It's a Listen, big, this, big, again, big I- deal. I go back to the Jimbo and Saban thing, right? When Saban says, oh, you know, A&M bought all their players, the smartest thing Jimbo could do is come back and go, yeah, we can do that now. Yeah, we absolutely (laughs) did. We have this collection of alumni that's very important to them that A&M football is good, and they went out and found our guys' NIL deals. The smartest thing Greg Sankey could do is to say that we're excited that our guys get to take advantage of NIL deals, including things like the video game, which could get each of them a $3,000 payment just for saying, yes, you can put my picture in the game. Instead, Greg Sankey reprimanded everyone, <laughs> made, right. made Nick Saban go on Sirius XM the next day to apologize, mm-hmm. and Jimbo Fisher came out, I think, two days later and said, hey, of the early signees, only one had an NIL deal before, so what That's the right. hell, guys? We that's right. Of the early signees, only one is interested in the video game. Yeah, that, that's right. Only one signed <laughs> up. The rest were like, wait, we can do that? Wait, where's the paperwork? So we're waiting <laughs> on the paperwork, really. Is what it is. Right. All right. That's going to do it for us next week. We are back into the game and the mechanics of the game Woo! itself. That's right. Uh, that'll be on episode 11. That's right. Dimitri, how do you feel? We've done 10 episodes of this thing. We're still going. Yes, I am sending you a commemorative watch. Uh, this is a big day. Oh my Number God. 10. Nobody said we could do it. Nobody. No, you're right. Nobody said we could do it. I mean, nobody ever brought it up at all, to be honest. Right. No one said episode 10 will it happen. It was just like we kept going. We just, yeah. Just my, my, wife never, my wife never said it wouldn't happen. She certainly implied it, though. <laughs> no, I, I get it. It's more of a look thing, right? Yeah, exactly. She's like, hey, I'm about to go record the podcast. It's like, hmm. Yeah, it's like her reaction when I was telling her about the podcast is, so it's about video games? You don't even play video games. I was like, no, baby, it's about one video game. Uh-oh. Oh, man, I've gotten so many reactions like that. It's like, okay, so what other games you talk about? I'm like, none. None, yeah. We talk about, no, I don't care about the other video game. Like, <laughs> college football video game is the, you know, right now, and I'll mention this and then we can leave. Right now, I have a current season going on NBA 2K, right? I'm my beloved New York Knicks. And we're about 20 games away from going into the playoff for my fifth year. We're the number one seed, of course. Suit number two seed right now is your Boston Celtics. Mm-hmm. The last game I played on that was about three and a half weeks ago. Yeah. And normally I give myself press conferences all the time to sort of help my brain unwind kind of thing. Like, And I've been talking about the same game for three weeks. And my brain starts immediately going to like... Maybe I need to start a new college football dynasty. Like mm-hmm. maybe I should get this emulated. Like I need to get back to this. I need back. I need back. I need back. And now I'm 
2K's losing me for a minute. Like, this podcast has got me reinterested in going and doing a, a college football dynasty back in NCAA 14. So. Yeah, no, I, I think that is uh, I think that is a natural thing when you start talking about one video game this much. Yeah, yeah. Cause again, you think I'm going to talk about this uh, with uh, 2K? No. Nah. They're still making 2K. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, college football, baby. All right, Dimitri, that's going to do it for us. We are, uh, we are piecing out of this joint, but we can't do it until we say goodbye to the people. So uh, let's say goodbye to the people. Save and send to next week, everybody.